Are there ever reasons to quit substitute teaching? I certainly found out this week. All right, now I know you guys are already saying, Greg, you're making this up. You didn't quit substitute teaching this week. Well, I actually did. Does that mean I will never substitute teach again? It does not. I'll explain that in a minute. I want this episode to be about reasons both not to quit and to quit. And I will tell you two circumstances in which I quit, and one of them was this week. So we'll get into that. I want you, and maybe this is going to be more important to you anyway, I want you to know some reasons why you shouldn't. And the reason I know these come up all the time, again, Going back to our Substitute Teachers Lounge group page, we are up over 900 now. I can't believe it. You know, it's that logarithm is interesting in that we hovered right around 200 and 300 when I first started it a few months ago, and then the discussion started, and it picked up, and it picked up. And what happens with Facebook is then the more activity that's in the group the more it pops up when somebody maybe perhaps searches for the phrase substitute teacher. So lots of active discussions on there, one of which is this. I remember one where the lady wrote a question. It was my first day of substitute. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. It's my first day of substitute teaching. It was terrible. It was, I forget what grade it was, but she mentioned some of the things that had happened and said, I'm ready to quit. Well, I'm here to tell you now, don't ever quit after one bad experience, you know, and maybe that's a life lesson for that matter, but let's think about it. You've got a passion for doing this, or you wouldn't be listening to this podcast, You've got a passion for substitute teaching the right way. You've got a passion. In my case, I always say my passion for building the relationships, the solid relationships with the students is even more than the education. That's my biggest goal, education second. And I would never isolate one incident as being the one that kicks you out. Now, I've never been physically challenged in a substitute teaching role, and I know not only can you not say that, it might be in the minority. I realize I'm in a unique situation. I'm in an area, hopefully I want to think that I created this a little myself, but I am definitely in an area where I've never really been physically challenged, knock on wood, of course. Have I had defiant students? Maybe I would classify most of them more than as rowdy than defiant. I've never had maybe probably the students that actually challenged, just looked in my face and challenged something I said has probably only happened. I can count it on one hand in the last three years, the amount of time that has happened, actually three and a half now. So I understand that's not the same for everybody. I understand based on where you're at based on the semantics, the demographics of the area you're in, it changes. Sometimes there's trouble students. But whatever you do, don't quit just based on one incident. Now, if you don't have to do substitute teaching, and I don't, if you don't have to do it and you're doing it just for fun, I say all the time that I enjoy it enough I do it for free. I say that about refereeing, too. I enjoy that enough that I would do it for free. Well, you've got a passion for it. Don't let one incident ruin your passion. And that was basically what everybody told her in answer to her question when she posted on the substitute teachers group. So first of all, don't ever quit because of one incident. In fact, maybe you want to take a couple of days off 
And I'll bet you by day three, you're going to think, well, maybe I could have done this to help the situation. Maybe I could have done this. Your, your initial reaction is very negative. You're thinking, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Then things settled down. I don't know why this popped into my head, but when I lost my smartphone, when I was in Fort Lauderdale in Florida to go on a cruise, my first response was panic. But then I came to the realization after about 30 minutes, well, I got to do something about it now. And we ended up getting the phone back. Same way with a situation like this, your first thoughts after a negative situation that makes you think you don't want to do this anymore is very negative. And your human nature, you shouldn't feel bad about having those thoughts. In fact, I admire the lady for sharing it on our Substitute Teachers Lounge Facebook group that she had those thoughts. And we kind of talked her down a little bit. You know, I hate to use the word off the ledge, but that's the phrase everybody uses all the time, talking off the ledge. And she felt better after the conversation. But let yourself settle, settle down a bit after a negative situation. And by all means, if you're in this business of substitute teaching, don't hold grudges. Don't go all back in. If you ever encounter that student again, even if it's in later years, don't expect anything bad. Don't treat them worse than you treat the other students because you remember what they did to you. Don't do it. Get over that moment. Try your best to relax and don't let that be the reason why you quit substitute teaching. Now, the next reason, let's just throw this out quickly, and it's the same in every industry, the pay. Substitute teachers in our area, we get more than paraeducators, much less than regular teachers. And for that matter, I think regular teachers, there, there's no doubt about it, it's underpaid. I just read an article where somebody is proposing putting a bill before Congress to allow teachers not to pay federal tax because we have such a teaching shortage. I hope that passes, man. We'll see how that goes. I'll keep you posted if I find anything else about it. But the pay, you don't teach. You don't substitute teach for the pay. You substitute teach for the love of the job, okay? Should you quit because of pay? I'm not going to say no. Financial decisions have to be your decisions. In my case, I'm getting slightly less than $100 a day in my area. Some of you are getting much more. Some of you may be getting less. Sometimes that's given the size of the district, the area of the country, maybe where more money is available. Maybe even cost of living type issues come in to that situation. But it's funny how I actually make 50% more at a volleyball match the same night than I made substitute teaching that day. Or in other words, in my area, substitute teaching day, this is with my credentials. I know um, my wife is retired, but she goes back and substitute. She's making probably 25% more than me, and rightfully so, because she is a fully credentialed, retired substitute teacher. So she's making about 125, it appears. Me, in the daytime during high school volleyball season, in the daytime, I'll make $100 to substitute teach. That takes me seven hours. I come in probably an hour early, half an hour for lunch. So that's actually eight and a half hours at least that I'm in the building. It's $100. That night, if I referee freshman, JV and varsity volleyball game, I get $150. Referees are currently getting pay increases, not that we're that good, not that we improve that much during the year. It's just that if we don't pay the referees that much, they won't come because we got too many parents yelling at them. So pay is a reason. You've got to decide that. I can't tell you if you make $100 a day that you're making enough. That's not my decision. Everybody's financial decision is different. With me, it's easy because I'm not doing this for the money. Some of you are doing it for the money. To this degree, and this has been discussed on our Facebook group as well, some of you are substitute teaching 
because that's what you love, but more importantly, because you don't have the time, the money, whatever, maybe the want to, to go back and get your teaching degree. So you're willing to substitute teach instead of getting your teaching degree and teaching full time. At the same time, a lot of you I see making comments that substitute teachers are never appreciated by teachers. I also see you making comments about we just go in and babysit the kids. I don't agree with either of those, but I don't work in your area. I will let it be known right now that Again, I think people listen to podcasts about substitute teaching. They all feel like they want to substitute teach, and they're in it for the right reason. But don't walk into a substitute teaching job looking for negative things to happen. If you do, you will find them. Walk in knowing that whatever happens today, I'm going to see if I can turn it positive. That's going to make your substitute day so go by so quickly, so much better. If it were me, I would never quit substitute teaching because of the pay. I like it so much, and I would recommend you don't do that either. The only other small reason I thought about I've actually heard of people quitting substitute teaching, maybe at an individual school because they take their planning period away for substitute teachers too often so that you can fill in in another class. I do that all the time, too. It seems like it comes up more in middle school, but a lot of times they will take away a planning period for a substitute teacher and put you in another class. They've been having substitute teachers all day long that day, taking an individual period. It's funny, the first time I ever substitute taught, I don't mean to make teachers cringe when I say this, I was surprised about the planning period. I guess I shouldn't have been. Teachers got a plan because substitute teachers... Unlike teachers, they do not need to spend as much time planning as regular teachers do. Teachers are grading, planning lesson plans. We're basically just filling in that hour until the next group of students comes along most of the time. So it's funny how I was surprised when I had a first planning period ever then the first time I had it taken away, I was I, I felt like, man, I can't believe they're taking away my planning period when really I didn't need it. I wasn't doing anything. But I've always thought that's funny that I actually have heard somebody quit a school because they ended up taking their planning periods away almost every day. So now, guess what? It's time to talk about. Greg, why did you quit this week? Well, I did. And again, it's, it's sort of just like the title of this episode indicated. Here's what happened, okay? And I've got a lot of students and teachers listening to this, so I'll tell you right up front, it ain't going to be anything negative about the school. I love the school. It's exciting right now because I'm a sports guy, and the school that I am at has broken some of their school records as far as how far they've made it into basketball tournaments. It's that time of year. You know if you live in Kentucky and it's March that it is a great time of year because it's March Madness coming up. It's it's basketball conference tournaments coming up. Well, here's what happened to me, and I had been thinking about this for several weeks. I have been a long-term substitute teacher for the most part since it would have been August of 2020. That's a year and a half ago, 2020. And I'm thinking, do I like long-term subbing more than day-by-day subbing? There's arguments for both. Long-term, you know you're going to the same school every day. You've probably got lesson plans laid out for you by the other teachers that you know are going to be really good lesson plans because you're in there for a while. They definitely had to plan it. It's not just something that came up because they got sick. This is a legitimate long-term role. So the entire 20 to 21 school year, I did it, including virtual classes, a full class load. I was long-term. This year, again, It's a little bit different. I didn't get hired long-term for the entire year in that way. This time, it was to assume different 
long-term roles beginning in August of 2021. By the way, this is, I'm recording this on March 5th, 2022, if you're interested in that. The COVID things, they're starting to lift a little bit. I pray that if somebody's listening to this a year later, that maybe most of the worst of that, it's not ever going to be all over. But anyway, so I've been long-term this August for, if I counted them up, I believe it is about four long-term positions, the fourth of which I'm in right now, and I've been in since the middle of February. Okay, guys, here's why I quit this week. I came to the realization, especially now that my wife is retired, we did take the month of January off, so to speak, to travel. We enjoyed it a lot. Retirement, even though I retired four years ago now, I've worked in schools and in refereeing all the way through that time, I've, I've never really not been in em, employed, at least in some kind of subcontractor or teaching atmosphere. So I have been thinking about for three weeks, my long-term job was supposed to have gone through April. I came to the realization, all right, I am retired from the finance industry. I am retired right now for the last two years with all these long-term roles. I really haven't had that much time off unless I just caught it between those long-term roles. And I, I got to realize, man, I miss being retired but not having the flexibility that I just want to take a day off. I just want to go to a basketball tournament that spans over four or five days. I just want to, after I referee club volleyball 18 matches over a Saturday and Sunday, I just want to maybe take a Monday off every now and then. Well, that's what I told them. I quit my long-term job this week because I wanted more flexibility in my retirement. I wanted to be able to take off a day here and there or maybe a week, which is what I'm doing next week. I really felt bad about telling them that, that I wanted basically this past Friday would be my last day in this long-term position. I told them that after a ball game when everybody was excited i want i didn't want them to wait any longer because i wanted to give them at least 3 days to try to do something before monday happened i did i made all my materials for all of next week i put everything in google classroom i even scheduled it so that the students can't see it yet but they will the assignments will pop open every day at the appropriate time i did all that i wanted to make sure they knew that was important, and I didn't want to just dump that on the new teacher. So they basically are ready for next week. They could, in effect, just show up and make sure they do their work. But I quit substitute teaching this week because I want it, basically, because I wanted to use my retirement for more free time than I had over the past year and a half. Now, they know, and you know, I didn't quit substitute teaching, period. I'm just deciding that in my situation, I would prefer now picking up jobs a day or a couple of days at a time rather than scheduling long-term roles. Some of you guys are tickled to death to have a long-term role, and I always was too. Probably because that's more your livelihood. You're wanting to make as much money as you can. Me, I still say I'm doing this for fun. I'm doing it because I love it. But I do want to have some of my time on my own. And since I've gone a year and a half as a full-time, long-term substitute teacher, it was time to make this decision, okay? So I have said that I'm unique in one regard and that I came from, I retired from an non-education background, so I'm a substitute teacher sort of different than you guys are, but I'm not really because there are a lot of you out there that are retired teachers, 
and you going back to substitute teach. And maybe you want to do long-term roles, but whatever you do, don't feel bad about just doing days at a time so that you can enjoy your retirement. You saved up for it. You Am I going to be the type of retired person that just wants to get up, do my exercise, go play golf, and come home every day? That would drive me bananas, and I've insulted all the retirees because there's a lot of them doing it and more power to you. But I got other things that I do like to do with that time. So that's why I quit this week. I have quit the long-term substitute teaching. I know for sure that I'll be off for at least a week and a half. Maybe next week I'll look, and there's not going to be any trouble finding a day-at-a-time job, believe me. The school I'm quitting, they know that I will come back here a day at a time. I just don't want any more long-term roles. And I was worried that they would be not upset. They wouldn't get upset, but a little bit wondering. I shouldn't have known they're classy people. I should have known they wouldn't be like this. I was worried that I left them with not enough time to replace me, and I did. But they all said, listen, if I were in your position, I understand. I would want to do the same thing. You're retired. Do some things that you enjoy to do, and I can't wait until I'm to that point, too. So, That's why I quit substitute teaching this week, at least the long-term version. I am going to only do day-by-days as it fits into my otherwise retired schedule things of what I want to do. Are there other uh, reasons to legitimately quit? Yeah, you've got to make those decisions on your own. I don't know about the discipline in your area. I don't know about the conflict with teachers in your area. I don't know. I'm picking up that that is a real thing in other schools. It's so foreign to me that I just can't fathom it. Probably the only other time, and not probably, the only other time that I've ever quit a school. We've talked about this, but this actually came up in one of my classes yesterday. There was a situation in one school, it's been a couple of years ago now, where they had to have a special meeting because there was a substitute teacher that was a performer as well. And he thought it would be cool one day to hand out advertising pictures of himself as a performer. Well, the advertising pictures are really pictures that they didn't want distributed at the school. They weren't offensive but they weren't totally clean either. I'll just leave it at that. So they had a special meeting about that. Didn't involve me, obviously, but it got back to me that that by the time the meeting was over, one of the teachers also said, and now I hear there's this guy that has a podcast for substitute teachers, so I guess I'm going to have to start listening to the podcast to see what kind of bad things he's saying about me and making sure he doesn't say anything inappropriate about my students. Well, my goodness, I don't. he probably never listened to it. He was probably just showing off. He was probably just upset that it, he thought it was something he had to put up with. Well, guess what? He didn't have to put up with it after that because I didn't go back to that school. I had eight more schools that call me all the time that want me to substitute teach. So, I didn't quit substitute teaching, but I did quit that school. I figured if he thinks that's a thorn in his side, I will take care of that. And if anybody asks me, I always say I did it for that teacher because I didn't want them to feel uncomfortable about me being there, okay? Other schools have not only let me into their buildings with open arms, but have let me record their students, obviously with the appropriate parental permission. They have let me record their students. They have been part of the podcast. The opening now that I have used for two years was a group of students in a sixth grade class who are now eighth graders, and I jokingly play it for them when I'm back in their class because their voices have changed so much and they've gotten so much taller. But guys, that's it. Yes, I did quit long-term substitute teaching. I did not quit day-by-day substitute teaching. 
probably won't do as much of it, but I will definitely do it as I have time wrapped around my retirement. You'll have to make your own decisions about what are the worst reasons to quit substitute teaching, what are some understandable reasons to quit substitute teaching. It's your life. You got to do what's best for you.